Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Uh, tonight, let's uh, let's start with a question that came up in the pregame chat about the qua. What what exactly do I mean when I talk about spiraling down uh, in in the qua? And that's uh, that's something that is um, it's a descriptive term that I don't know if anybody else uses it, but it's something that I find helpful. And that is, it's indicating that there is a, a direction that there's a release of the, of the hip joint, which allows you to turn, but there's also a downward direction on that, uh, uh, on that turn. So if I'm, if I have my, my right leg here, and let's say I feel the ball of my right foot. I set my right knee. I'm going to pick up my back heel just so I'm really low, really fully committed to that front leg. So if I'm going to spiral down to the left, that means that I'm going to release the quad, release the hip joint, and allow my body to turn, but at the same time it's sinking. And whenever I do that, that opens up this area here, opens up the groin and allows for energy to flow very nicely. And there's a connection to the earth and it unkinks the hose here. But there's a, a lot of why, why I, I suggest to do this is because it is remedial. That is, we're, it's correcting something that we tend to uh, we tend to hold on to a lot of tension in the hip joint. So, in other words, if I'm if I say, "Oh, I'm just going to turn to the right," and I just turn my body to the right, I haven't released the quad. And the natural impulse is to go the path of least resistance and say, "Okay." Turn to the right, sure, I'll turn to the right, da, da, da. And I, and I do that, but when I do that, if I haven't released the quad, then it's gonna have a tendency to pull up on, the, uh, on, on everything below it. There's a tendency to pull up and to, as I turn, there's only way I can get to turn is by pushing my butt out to the side. So the, what I'm suggesting is if I want to turn to the right, I spiral down to the left. That is, I feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and then I release down. I rotate down and allowing the body weight to push down. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just allowing the body to, to release down. So what that does is it opens up the energy channels and allows that to move through. So if I just if I'm in that in that release posture, if I then reach out and have someone push on me, then it's there's an I can feel the gin. There's a whole body energetic connection there and allows for for that the power is already gushing through. It's there's a there's a connection from my from the earth up through my body and up through my hand. So I automatically have that already. But then if I want to then use this power to do what we do in Tai Chi, one of the key things in Tai Chi, and it's something that is fundamental to Tai Chi, is turning the waist. Okay? So if I just turn the waist without that initial step, I, I don't really have it. I don't have nothing. Uh, there's no, there's, if I just turn, this, this, there's no connection there. But if I spiral down first and then turn the waist, then this is loaded up. So there's a, there's the energy is, is full there. So the question was a sense of, of loading and then releasing outward. And it's like, not exactly, because we want to keep the energy in. So there's, it's circulating through but there's a constant fullness to the energy as you make that turn. So this whole thing is, oh, you're, you're, there's a continuum. It's almost like a, um, 
like a hydraulic uh, press or a hydraulic uh, jack or something like that, where you you pump it up and so it's a boom, and you have this hydrostatic pressure in the in the whole system. So that combined with the tensegrity of the of the connective tissue system, you have this very powerful but yet very supple energy and 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 structure so that you're able to have that tai chi power and without muscular contraction and uh, so the, the so the spiraling down is a releasing down and then there's the turn okay and the turn it's not a, a launching it's just a turn and that is driven by the yao that is driven by the the lower lower lumbar sacral area the lumbosacral area so what happens is and if you put your hand here and you, you turn it it's like you can feel that power generating that that is um it's creating a uh, uh this torque in, in as you, as you turn and uh so let's uh, let's actually uh, do the qua set and just feel into this. Oh, actually, before we do that, one more thing. One more thing, and this is key to it also, is uh, the Wei Lu. I don't talk much about the Wei Lu. And so actually, before we do that, let me just talk a little more here. Okay, so the uh, Wei Lu is a, an energy gate at the at the at the coccyx, your tailbone, and the idea is that you are extending from the Wei Lu, that you're dropping that, and when that does, when you re, you're releasing the lower the lower back, and you're allowing that to to drop, and. Uh, and you correspondingly, you reach up with the crown of your head. And so there's this lengthening of the spine and also a slight flattening of the lumbar curve. So you have, we have a tendency whenever we, uh, you know, we, particularly if we're weights in our heels, we lock our knees, there's a tendency to, to really arch the back to create a, uh, you know, create support. But what we want to do is, is to unlock the knees and relax the lower back so that the Wei Lu points down. And when that happens, whenever you reach up with the crown, reach down with the Wei Lu, and you're feeling the weight over the balls of the feet, then there's this profound energetic connection. And that also by doing that, you're opening up the jade pillow gate at the, uh, at the base of the skull. So those, you know, those are three gates, your Mi Wan, your, your uh, uh, Yutren, and your uh, Wei Lu. And when you get that, those lined up, then turning becomes much more fluid because it's a tendency for um, pelvic tilt in our posture. That is, if the, if the pelvis is, is, is tilted forward like this, that's called an anterior tilt, and you're kind of spilling out, and that's when your butt's sticking out and you get a, a, a big lumbar curve. There's a posterior tilt where you are, you know, you are pulling up like that and you're kind of hunched over there's a, uh, you can get a posterior tilt. And there's also a lateral tilt of the pelvis where people who say they have, oh, my one leg is shorter than the other. It's usually because there's a posterior tilt, usually caused by, by standing on one leg like this or like that, you know, and you get that so that you are get a, a posterior or a, a lateral tilt in your, in your pelvis. So what we want to do with the Wei Lu is to just release that lower back so that we get the pelvis nice and even, so that we have it nice and and, and neutral. Valerie. Um, okay, two things. 
one, you you don't spiral up, correct? Right. Okay. And two, can you be um, Wei Lu and Yao? Uh, so the the Wei Lu is just the tip of the tailbone, and the Yao is more that whole lower lumbar. Up this up a little higher. Okay. This is the, so when we talk about turning the waist. It's actually driven. The Yao is the is the young part of it. It's it's the driver as the as we turn the waist, that's the yao is what drives it. The, so we release down, we spiral down, and then we, we turn, and that, uh, that, that's driven by the yao. And your first, your first point, your first question was what? I, I, I oh, you're, you're not really spiraling up ever. Oh, right? you're not spiraling up, yes. So, so what we don't want to do is Spiral down and then spiral up and spiral down and spiral up. We we want to spiral down and then turn, keeping it staying down. And then we spiral down this way and then we turn this way. And there's there's we're able to go back and forth. And there's a, a sense of constantly be going going down, even though you're you're not really, but you're the feeling is of that. That's that's the mindset is you're you're down, 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 down. That makes sense, Sharon. Um, it's uh, I it's an observation within myself, and I'm looking for a correction if it's necessary. Okay. With feet in parallel, and trying to do um, you know a swing for a warm up, like from side to side, and and as I focus on turning one way to go the other, um, I sense. A little bit of a figure eight movement in there. In your pose. Is, no, no. In, my, no, in my hip joint. Um, and is that okay or is it something I need to be correcting? I don't know what that means actually. A figure okay. eight. It, I, 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 I feel right in my hip joint like it's making a you know, figure eight. So rather than just rotating in, in place, it's going like this. Yes, yeah. And and I don't know how to make a correction on that. Um, so it'd be more like it'd be more more like this, right? You're kind of no, it's 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 very no, it's so much smaller. It's it's not yeah, that. That's, that's, it's, yeah. it's yes, that's, it's yeah, it's minute, yeah. but it's there. Okay, so the closer you can get to dead center in your hip joint, the better, the, le the more efficient that movement's gonna be. Okay, so it, it's, a, it's probably gonna take some, some letting go of old habits to make that happen. But that turn, you know, that spiraling down and turning is the closer you can get to being it, you know, right on, right on that, dead center point, the, the better, that pivot point being uh, closer to zero. Okay. So that's my, my advice, but that's something I think we, we have to work at to get to the point where that is, becomes easy. And I think also the Wei Lu idea um, adds to it. So if, you're, if there's any kind of pelvic tilt, there is a tendency to throw the the whole thing off, you have to compensate for the fact that that it's not flat. If it's like this, then there's a tendency to 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 weave about. Mm -hmm. So I think releasing that and and allowing the the lower spine to really relax and and settle in is is a uh, helpful in in describe and handling whatever it is. So I think I guess if uh, that would be a correction. If uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to work on that, is to uh, to just get so that you're, and I would say just slow it down, so that you're, you know, the turn is very, very small, right? So that you that, that release is very small, so you're actually able to feel if there's any eccentricity to the 
to the motion, any deviation from that central pillar. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Scott. Um, so when I, do, when I do all this, a lot of the time, most of the time, I would probably say, I then have to, I then have to push my knees in to get them over my, the balls of my feet. Okay. So is that just something I need to just keep practicing and working on? It's just, just like you said, old habits that need to be? Probably. Probably. I'd, I'd have to take a look at you personally and, and see if there's any, uh, you know, any severe bow-leggedness or anything that uh, but you can tell if that's, if that's the case. Usually, and I, I know you and I know that you've had knee problems for a long time, so I'm, I'm going to guess that that your body has developed compensations over the decades. And so to undo any of that, it's going to take time. So be patient and just kind of very nibble at it rather than force it. I, I would say that'd be my, uh, my advice on that. Great. Dennis. Yeah. Um, I've always been taught that well, the, the form is is, is, is is a series of yin and yang, expansion and contraction. You you expand, you're, it's young, you contract, it's it's yin. And you, you, know, you can move through the form that way. And as long as it's, maybe I'm going down the wrong road, but when we do the claw exercise, one, it feels like you're doing a ward off, roll back. So it isn't, we talk about the energies, but isn't, are, are we switching from yin to yang when we do that? those exercises. So you're saying that, that you say, uh, uh, roll back would be a, a yin move and uh, a ward off, off would be a yang move, right? Yeah. And, uh, and that is generally speaking, true. And when we do but, the quad exercise, one, one feels like, one, one way feels like you're doing ward off and the other way feels like you're doing a roll back. Well, uh, there, there's a sense of that too, but it's also uh, what I, um, within each move there's yin and yang. Okay. So it's not like, so let's say in, in, a, in, a, in a rollback, I'll do it the way I would do, you know, in Master Chen's form. I start with, and, and ward off, I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, this is the yang part of ward off, and then uh, what do I do? I release first down into my, uh, my front leg. And that's a yin aspect. But within that yin, the, the overall flow there is yin. It's kind of releasing down. But what's happening? Oh, my arms are still reaching out. And that's yang. And I'm going into my back leg. So I feel the ball set the knee. and. Spiral down to the right, that's also yin. But within that, there's also, I'm reaching out with my right hand, and that's yang. And now I'm going to turn, and as I turn, that's yin. I'm coming down and in, but what's happening? I'm reaching out with my arms, and that's yang. And so within the Tai Chi Tu, there is a, uh, you know, the, the Tai Chi symbol is, uh, you know, within the, the yang, there's a yin. Within the yin, there's a yang. And that's always the case. So you, uh, so it's uh, not as cut and dried as roll back, yin, ward off yang. Right. Yeah, both yeah, have yin, both have yang, and that is changing other. constantly. OK. So whenever we're doing the qua exercise, we're also exploring yin and yang. You know, and we're getting, we're feeling that we're feeling into that, and that provides the foundation. And within every, within every yin, there's a yang. All from Brian. Ah, sorry about that. Call from Brian. Uh, sorry about that. Let me turn that off. So, 
So the uh, having a central pillar, which is defined by the Niwan, the Wei Lu, opening the Jade Pillow Gate, your central equilibrium, connecting that up to the feet, then allows you to rotate as close as you can to zero, to that, that pivot point, getting that. And the closer you get to that, the more powerful, the more efficient, the less injurious that, uh, that motion is. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? These are all great. They're all very, very helpful in clarifying what's going on here. Okay, we're all good. Okay, so uh, so the uh, let's do the qua exercise this time with some attention on the way Lu, and that is releasing your lower back and using that nice and slow and being able to try to get as close to the to the zero point that pivot point in your hip joint as you can and you can actually focus right on that point where where the the femur the head of the femur um, locks into the ball and socket joint there in your pelvis so there's a so if that if you have that as your as your pivot point, then you're uh, your 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 gold. All right, let's try it. Let's get. Uh... Let's begin. Uh, right foot forward. Pick up the left heel. So. Begin by feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, reach with the knee one, tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. You're kind of flattening out your sacrum so that it's, your sacrum is vertical. Knee is, is released. It's, not heavily bent, doesn't, it, can be, it can be, but does, the main thing is you're, you're releasing down into that front leg. You're really relaxing into it. And as you spiral down to the right, nice and slow, really feel into that hip joint and just allow yourself to settle into that and find the sweet spot where you're connecting up to the ball of the foot. Relax that lower back and then turn back to center. And then spiral down to the right. And so when you're turning back to center, you're not spiraling up, you're just rotating. So if I'm, if I, my, but my torso is pointing out that way. And as I turn back to center, it's not pointing straight ahead. One more time, spiral down to the right. And I'm just using my hand here as, as a direction to indicate the direction my torso is facing. So notice that my knee is facing straight ahead and my torso is facing that way. So the whole body is turning as, as you release down and then turn back to center. And whenever you do this, we're exaggerating the qua opening here. We're exaggerating the, the movement. You don't have to move this much when you're actually utilizing it. But for right now, let's do that. Now let's say, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. You're still releasing that way, Lou. Feel that, nice and relaxed. Feel your pelvis adjust and then spiral down to the left. Notice that my body turns with that. Still keeping on that pivot. And part of the protest that your body's gonna give you is that it's not used to working this hard in, that, in this way and turn back to center. Your leg muscles may say, hey, wait a minute, we had a deal. And 
and spiral down to the left. Really feel yourself releasing down into that right leg and turn back to center. Good, now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and pick up your right heel, your front heel. We're gonna turn, we're gonna spiral down to the left. So spiral down to the left. Really relax your lower back, drop the way Lou. Really release down. Just hanging out here and seeing what you can let go of. Your, your empty leg should really be loosey goosey. Okay, there should be no tension there, There's no grabbing in that, because that's going to throw you off and turn back to center. And notice you may have to adjust your, your pelvis as you did. You're not forcing the pelvis down, you're releasing it down. Okay, and turn, spiral down, releasing down, and turn back to center. Just feel into that. So there's a lot of chi that's getting built up in your leg, in your pelvis, and that's circulating through the whole body. But it takes some getting used to getting getting used to that much chi in your leg. Spiral down to the left and back to center. Spiral down to the right. You may not be able to go quite as far this way, and that's fine. You just what can I release? How much can I let go of that? of the insubstantial leg and be able to really just count on that left leg and back to center. Spiral down to the right. Loading up. And back to center. So we don't even have to think about gathering energy here. It's happening. If you just release the claw and allow that big chi to move through, the big chi of the earth coming up from the bottom, big chi from the heavens coming down through the, through the knee one and back to center. And just let that move through, you're getting a whole lot and you don't have to really worry about it. It's just, oh, okay. You can move quite effortlessly because the, the energy is, is, is full and you're just getting out of the way of that, of that doing its work. So step, put your uh, weight in your left leg, pick up your right heel for your front leg. I'll just face do it sideways this time. So feel the ball of the left foot, set the le left knee, relax your lower back, really just Take a moment and feel into that. You want to allow yourself to move, enter into that quiet space, that space between thoughts. And so as you turn, you're, spir or you're spiraling down to the left and just releasing down. Now really feel, feel the joint, feel that, that hip joint and turn back. We're letting go of the muscular interference that we ordinarily have there. Relaxing that right leg. The right leg is empty. Really let it go and really release down. Feel the connection from the ball through the knee, through the hip joint, all the way up to the crown point of the head and turn back to center. Let's bow down to the left. Spiral down to the right. 
You're releasing down, you're sitting down into that leg. And the closer you can get to just nice, centered over that hip joint, better, and back to center. And spiral down to the right. So remember when we do this, when we reach with the D1, reach down, you know, relax down with the with the Wei Lu, we open the Jade Pillow Gate, there's this Jing Shen, this spirit of vitality. And spiral down to the right. The spirit of vitality radiates throughout your being. This connects you up. The Jing Shen. And back to center. Right ball, set the right knee. Pick up the left heel. Really empty out that left leg. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the right. And turn back to center. And spiral down to the right. Turn back to center. Throw down to the right. One interesting thing, turn back to center, is uh, about the Wei Lu, is it's at the location of the um, the, what do they call it? The ganglion impar. Now spiral down to the left. The ganglion impar is a ganglion or a nerve plexus, a, a bunch of nerves, a nerve center that's located on the anterior face or the front face of your coccyx and turn back to center. So the ganglion impar is the terminus of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system runs in chains of ganglions, 20 to 30,000 of these little buggers uh, in your back running parallel to the spine. And they all meet up at the ganglion impar right there at the coccyx. And that's the, it is the only ganglion that is solitary. It's not a pair. Spiral down to the left. And your sympathetic nervous system is what is the energy out part. It's the, it drives the, uh, you know, the impetus, the motor system and turn back to center. Yeah. So now give it, feel your weight 50, 50. So what happens is these, you have these two left, right chains of, uh, of, ganglions that uh, are, are animating your sympathetic nervous system, which operates at that at that autonomic nervous system level that uh, where there's a direct response from the, the spinal cord. It, it takes energy information from the spinal cord and brings it out to to the to the body. It's also highly responsive to the flight or fright, fight, flight or freeze. Uh, mechanism. So whenever we connect up the Wei Lu and do that again right now, just consciously just relax your, your lower back and allow your Wei Lu to drop, reach with your knee one. Anytime we do that, we make this shift. We calm the, the sympathetic nervous system and allows you to move into a parasympathetic state or at least a more balanced state. And that helps you to let go of stress every time you do that. So part of that idea of the Jing Shen is you're also getting out of that nervous energy that must do something 
and allows you to accumulate, circulate a whole lot of chi without that that need to uh, to uh, to act. You can act or not. So you can just feel the chi, just as you're doing right now. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and spiral down to the right. Turn to the left. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the left leg now. And turn to the right. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Turn to the right. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Turn to the left. Just feel into that. Feel, feel into your coccyx, your tailbone. And you can actually control your, your coccyx and your Wei Lu. You can just by gently doing like a Kegel exercise kind of thing where you're just kind of lifting gently with the perineum. And that gives a tug on the on the the coccyx without bending your without you know tucking in your um, your pelvis. Just allow your your lower back to relax and just feel the energy moving through you. Feel it in your hands. That tingling you're feeling in your hands is a uh, a really good barometer for how much whole body energetic connection you've got right now. Okay, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, sink. And then step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Feel into the emptiness. Great. Grab a seat. Was that helpful? Yes, 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 yes. Good, good, good. It's something that, uh, you know, we never talk about other outside of this, <laughs> this group, you know, it's not something that gets discussed much, you know, the qua and how to, how to activate it in this way. And it's something that you know I haven't found in a lot of uh, a lot of the literature either. So it's a uh, it's something that you know was emphasized, I guess, in the sort of the the uh, for the inner door students, but the uh, for a lot of the the broad public information, it's just not there. So to actually explore this is uh, uh, takes us to a different a different level. 
and it's something that re needs refinement over and over again because you know like I, I think I read to you recently like how the crown of the head and the waist you know, is said that you know the young family transmission said that you know that can be studied for a lifetime and that waist thing is that the, the, this is the secret of being able to turn the waist effectively. Valerie, you had something? I, um, I really noticed tonight that, uh, you know, the pulsing in the fingers, it's, it's like inside, you know, it's not like the outside of my hand, but the inside feeling it's so full. When we were turning, I found that in that transition of like turning to the right or turning to the left, I would tighten the qua and I wasn't really realizing I was doing that during the transition. It's like mm. I'd get there and then my fingers would go, aha. And then when I'd turn in the opposite direction, it had lessened, but then I'd get back, you know, to the position mm. and then they'd be full again. So I, I appreciate that, that, you know, that subtlety that we were doing and focusing um, so that I could see where I ne really need to focus is in the transition, in the change. Thank you so much for saying that because that is really, uh, uh, that's what it's about. It's about slowing things down so much that you can actually identify all the little stuck points because we've accumulated them over decades of doing it a different way. You know, we've accumulated lots of different little compensations and they're going to still have a voice in how you move, how you stand until you actually look at them and say, hey guys, you really want to do it this way? And uh, then they can say, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You know. And you get, you get to play with it. And if you play with it and you, your body gets enough feedback that says, you know, really, we got to, we got to make the jump here and just all in on this uh, on this qua thing then you uh then you're able to you know you're able to make that uh, make make a, an adjustment cool anybody else da, da, da. okay all good so everybody's good on that uh great um let's do a um uh, Let's do a little qigong that kind of incorporates some of that. And with the, so we're on the tail end of the Chinese winter. It, uh, the, it, it, the transition date that marks the springtime is not the one that we adhere to in the Gregorian calendar. It is one that is, uh, it's uh, the Chinese New Year is whenever we shift from from it's a lunar calendar and we shift from uh, water to metal. And two weeks on either side of that, there is a transition where earth, so we're going, or, no, I'm sorry, not metal, but wood. We're going from water to wood. And there's a, uh, a transition where earth on, on either side of it. So it's, it's water moving into earth, then earth moving into wood is the way it, the way it works in the uh, energetically, so we're kind of tailing down. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little thing here where we're gonna use some water chi and some some um, earth chi, and a very simple thing I, that uh, we can do is just to kind of bring that energy in and kind of include some of the qua stuff too. So stand up, please. Okay, so feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. And step out with the left foot. So your weight is about 90% in the right leg. With your right hand, you reach out and circle. And really just feel into that. So this is the earthy part, making that circle, feeling the connection. Okay, so you're spiraling down to the right, you're circling, you're turning back to center. 
and bringing your right hand up the center line. So bringing up through the, um, uh, the lower abdomen, so the water center up and reach forward. Now with your, feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee and spiral down to the left. Circle with your left hand. Back to the lower abdomen under your, under your navel. And as you bring up your left hand up the center line, you rotate your left, right forearm and reach up. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, circle, really reach with that elbow, reach with the fingers, open the shoulder joint. Back to the Dantian and up, left hand rotates, comes down and reach. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, circle. To the Dantian, up. And reach. And hold that for a moment. Take a moment to check your three pillars. Reach with the knee wand, open the jade pillow gate, relax your lower back and drop the way Lu. Reach with your fingers, reach with your elbows. Make sure your quad is nice and released. There. And step back, the left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and step forward with the right foot. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, right hand up the center line and reach. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left circle. Left hand up, rotate the right forearm, reach. When you're in this position, you want to feel the elbows, feel that elbow chin, feel it opening the shoulder joints. Really check through your body and, and make sure that you're letting go of any extraneous muscular tension. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, circle. Take the left forearm, reach out with the right hand. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left, circle. Turn, left hand up, right hand down. Reach. And hold. Relax. Let go of any extraneous muscular tension. Feel. Step in. A deep breath. And 
clear. Feel the space as you're pushing down. Emptying out. Just dissolving. Feel into the emptiness. Take a seat. <clears throat> How'd that feel, Rick? <laughs> Good. Good. How's everybody doing? Okay. Uh Rick? Yeah. Yes, a question. Uh, when the arm goes out, you said it rotates. Uh, uh, could you show it in this position? Because I could see it better. Before, I wasn't quite making out uh, as to what, what is actually happening. Rotating outwards like this? Did it, come, did it go out like this? You're talking about the the hand comes up the up, comes yes up the center line like this right yeah yes and then, and then reaches out oh reaches out like that so you're, you're coming up like this and reach out palm up palm up okay Thank that makes sense yes coming up like that and palm up so you're you're drawing the energy up the center line and reaching. So yes. actually, we, we kind of included uh, some uh, some wood there as well, because there's a there's a, a woody energy that's associated with that that reach as well. But um, so there's got a little bit a uh, little bit of, for the for the season. Yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, any questions? Thoughts? All good? Okay, thank you all so much. Love you all. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you, good Maria. night, all. Thank, thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, good Rick. night, Maria. I love you guys. Oh, same here. <laughs>